Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. This is the A Plus Tutor. Today we're going over classifying polygons. A polygon is a closed figure. For example, we have a triangle, which is three sides, a quadrilateral, which has four sides, and a pentagon, which has five sides. So anything that's five or more, we simply can call a polygon. We're able to give polygons specific names based on their sides and angle measurements. First, let's look at triangles. Triangles are polygons that have three sides and the sum of their interior angles is 180 degrees. We have four types of triangles. Right triangles, which have exactly one right angle. Equilateral triangles, where all three sides are congruent and all three angles are congruent. So all components of the triangle are congruent to each other. Isosceles triangles, where exactly two sides are congruent and two angles are congruent. Or a scalene triangle, where no sides are congruent and no angles are congruent. These are the four types of triangles that we can classify. Next, we have quadrilaterals. Quadrilaterals are polygons that have four sides and the sum of their interior angles is 360 degrees. If we have a shape that has four sides and there's no relationship between any of the sides or any of the angles, it's simply a quadrilateral. We may have a quadrilateral that looks like this. Here, Adjacent sides are congruent, so our two sides at the top are congruent to each other and our two sides at the bottom are congruent to each other. And one pair of opposite angles are congruent. This quadrilateral is called a kite. Another type of quadrilateral is a trapezoid. Trapezoids have one pair of parallel lines. We may have a trapezoid that has one pair of congruent sides or a trapezoid that has two right angles. However, anytime we have a quadrilateral with one pair of parallel lines, it is a trapezoid. Another type of quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Parallelograms have two pairs of parallel sides. The top and the bottom sides are parallel and the right and left sides are parallel. Additionally, parallelograms have two pairs of congruent sides. So the top and bottom sides are also congruent and the right and left sides are congruent to each other. This applies to its angles as well. The opposite angle within parallelograms are congruent. We can further define parallelograms based on the type of parallelogram they are. First, we have a rectangle. Rectangles are a type of parallelogram where not only are the opposite sides congruent, but all four angles within this shape are right angles. Or we can define parallelograms as a rhombus. Opposite sides are congruent, but furthermore, every side is congruent to each other. So all sides are the same size and opposite angles are congruent. We can then take the combination of our rectangle and rhombus and come up with a square. In a square, all four sides are congruent, just like in our rhombus, and all four angles equal 90 degrees, just like in our rectangle. So a square is a type of parallelogram where all sides are congruent and all angles are congruent and equal 90 degrees. Then, when we have five or more sides, we have polygons. 
and the sum of the interior angles of a polygon is greater than 360 degrees. It depends on the number of sides each polygon has. So we can always find the sum of the interior angles using the formula 180 times n minus 2, where n is the number of sides that that polygon has. Some examples of polygons are pentagons, which have five sides, hexagons, which have six sides, septagons, which have seven sides, and octagons, which have eight sides. And this goes on. Our list is not limited to these four here. You can create a polygon with as many sides as you can think of, and it will have a name. For example, a nine-sided figure is called a nonagon, and a ten-sided figure is called a decagon. Now let's look at some problems where we need to identify the polygon shown using the most specific name. So based on all of the criteria we set, we want to make sure we're using the most specific name to define these polygons. First, we have this shape. This shape has four sides, which means it is a type of quadrilateral. Opposite sides are congruent, or we have two pairs of congruent sides, and we have four right angles. So this means this must be a rectangle. Next, we have another shape that again has another, next we have another polygon that has four sides. So that means it's a type of quadrilateral. Adjacent sides are congruent. Adjacent just means next to. So the sides that are next to each other, we see the two sides on top and the two sides at the bottom are next to each other, which means they are congruent sides. Here we see our adjacent sides are congruent and we have one pair of congruent angles that are opposite each other. So that means this must be a kite. Next, we have a polygon that has five sides. When we count the sides, there are five sides. So that means this must be a pentagon. Next, we have a polygon that has four sides, which means it is a quadrilateral. Since none of the sides are congruent, none of the angles are congruent, and we can't identify any sides that are parallel, this simply is a quadrilateral. Here we have a polygon with three sides, which means it's a type of triangle. All three sides are congruent, and all three angles are congruent, which means this is an equilateral triangle. Here we have a polygon that has four sides, so it's a type of quadrilateral. The opposite sides are parallel, the opposite sides are congruent, and the opposite angles are congruent as well. This means this must be a parallelogram. Here we have another quadrilateral. This polygon has four sides. We have one pair of congruent sides, and we have one pair of parallel sides. This means this must be a trapezoid. And for our last example, we have another four-sided polygon, so it's a quadrilateral. All the sides are congruent, all four sides are congruent, and opposite angles are congruent. So that means this must be a rhombus. Next, let's determine if the following statements are always true, sometimes true, or never true.
Based on the features of our polygons, we can determine how true these statements are. First, a rhombus is a square. Well, both rhombus and squares have four congruent sides, and squares have four congruent angles, which rhombuses can sometimes have four congruent angles. Therefore, this statement is sometimes true. A triangle is a parallelogram. Well, parallelograms have four sides and triangles have three sides. So this statement is never true. A square is a parallelogram. Squares have four sides. Opposite sides are congruent and opposite angles are congruent. And squares have two pairs of parallel sides. Therefore, this statement is always true. A square is a rhombus. Squares have four sides. All four sides are congruent and opposite angles are congruent. So this statement must always be true. A parallelogram is a rectangle. Parallelograms have four sides, opposite sides are congruent, and opposite angles are congruent, which is also true in rectangles. So therefore, as long as the angles in that parallelogram are 90 degrees, this statement is sometimes true. A trapezoid is a parallelogram. Trapezoids have four sides, just like parallelograms, and parallelograms have two pairs of parallel sides. Trapezoids only have one. So this is never true. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe so you never miss a new video. I upload new videos every Tuesday and every Thursday at 1 p.m. Comment down below what other topics you'd like me to go over. Feel free to also comment on my Instagram or my Facebook page at the A Plus Tutor. Those are linked in the description box below. See you next time.